Welcome back to another RMS Support Center tutorial video. Today's topic is going to cover how to add a contract. In order to add a contract, we're going to go ahead and click the Add button on the Contract Selection view. And we're going to go ahead and enter the title for our new contract. Here, we're going to go ahead and select the office we want our contract to be under. In this case, we want our contract to be under the Support Center office. Here, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And once when you've added your office, the contract menu is going to go ahead and open up. And we're going to head to the contract description module. Now that we're in the contract description view, every contract description will be different. In this case, we should always fill out the fiscal year, the contract short title, the contract number, along with the contract long title. We should also set the primary fund type along with the contracting method and customer. And then down towards the bottom, we want to make sure we have the wage determination number and also the wage determination date. Once when you fill out all the information that you need to for your contract within the contract description, we're going to go ahead and click the back arrow to commit all changes. Now that we're done with the contract description, we're going to go ahead and head into the contract setup module. On this first tab, we have our administration and funding sections. Here we can set all information that we want for our particular contract. We could set the CFMS database. Down at the bottom, we have our funding section where we can change our funding method and also our currency type. On the next tab, we have our payment modifications tab. On this tab, if we head to the payment section of it, we have the first checkbox, progress payments allow additional earnings not included in activity earnings. If this is marked, it's going to allow the contractor to bill for stored materials and performance in payment bond. The second is include all activities on prompt payment document. If this is marked, we're going to go ahead and be able to see all invoices at an activity level instead of a CLIN level. Down at the bottom, we have our ACO modifications and CO modifications. Once when you're done with this tab, we're going to go ahead and head into the Quality Assurance tab. Under this tab, we can set our QA report type, set our project engineer, and down towards the bottom, we can set our time extensions due to adverse weather. Once when you're done with the Quality Assurance tab, we're going to head to the Submittal Schedule tab. At the top, we have our submittal register list. Here we can add another register to this particular contract. If we go down to the submittal sections, here we can enter the review periods for the appropriate type of submittal types and also the default number of copies. We can also set the default government reviewer and also the address for the 4025 packages to be sent to. In the schedule section, we can set our contractor schedule type to either import or we can set it to manually enter. Once when you're done with the submittals or schedules tab, we're going to head into the dredging tab. Now this tab is only used if your contract requires dredging. If your contract requires dredging, simply click the track dredging information in the RMS for this contract. Click this checkbox and the cover will be removed. Here we have the dredging information system, the dredging information, and also the dredging reports. Once when you're done with all these tabs, go ahead and click the back arrow. Our next step is to head into the prime contractor module. Here we're going to set all the information for our prime contractor. Now we want to make sure that we set our RMS3 prime contractor and we can simply click the blue tile, select your prime contractor and click OK. Once when you're done with the prime contractor info tab, we can head to the contractor staff tab. And lastly, we can add our contractor staff here. Here we can simply add our contractor staff by clicking the add button. Please note you can only add contractor staff if a prime contractor is selected. If a prime contractor isn't selected, please go back to the prime contractor info tab and select a prime contractor. Once when you're done with that, we've successfully completed all the first few steps of adding and also setting up a contract. Thanks for watching.